Hey guys, it's your friend Super VGA. I uh, want to show you something that I just learned how to do today. I think you're going to find this pretty interesting. This is how to crack something using uh, a debugging tool or assem uh, assembly language, uh, machine language monitor. So I just grabbed a piece of uh, shareware here that we can use as a uh, little demo of how to do it. Um, this program converts uh, bitmap fonts into true type fonts. And um, as you can see, when you are in demo or trial mode, characters A through N only get output as true type fonts. So um, what you need to do is somehow register this, and we're going to try to register this. And of course, we're going to see that you get a failure. Um, however, the interesting thing is that's actually, when it comes to cracking, that's not really a failure. That's very useful information on how to crack it. So let's step through the process. I'm going to load up the program that I use to crack with. It's called um, Ollie DBG, Ollie Debug. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. Uh, we're not going to concern ourselves with monitoring um, this, uh, all of the different things going on here. I want to step you through the process of how to actually crack something. So first things first, we're going to exit the program. Okay, so we are going to run the uh, pix font from the debugger, and it's going to start up the program, and here we have it running, but this time it's being monitored by uh, pix font, uh, sorry, by uh, Ollie. So Ollie's going to keep an eye on what instructions are being run in what order, um, and the first thing we noticed was uh, when we clicked register, um, we tried to put in a username and registry key, we got some information, not valid registry information. Okay, so why don't we search for the words valid registry information inside of Ollie. So we are going to um, search for or find references to, I believe it's going to be search for, um, all intermodal modular calls. And in all, so we're going to do a different process actually than I originally suggested. So the first thing we're going to do is try to find a string comparison because the idea is when you, um, when you put in this username and the key, it's going to compare that key versus some sort of um, pre pre-existing key that it has in mind that it wants you to use. So it's going to be doing a string comparison. So we're going to search I'm going to open this up a little bit wider for you. I'm sorry, if you find this boring, it's going to get interesting really, really quick. So we are looking for this, exactly. And now I've already highlighted those, so I'm going to unhighlight them just so you can follow along in the, um, follow along in the thought process. So what we were looking for was string comparisons, and specifically string CMP IA. And I just, what I did was I just highlighted those and every time I found them I just set some breakpoints. So a breakpoint means whenever this instruction is called, Ali Debug is actually going to pause this program. Um, so if I hit OK, nothing happened. Well that's kind of interesting. So that means that none of these are being triggered by um, trying to put in registry information. So that means in some ways that, well not in some ways, that means that the string comparison uh, approach isn't going to work. So let's just get rid of those breakpoints. Now, well, what else can we do if, if we couldn't find the right string comparisons? And I searched through the whole list, there are no more string comparisons done. So when I click this, I get username and registry key. We put in a username, let's try this, registry key, not valid registry information. Okay, so our approach for doing the string comparisons didn't work, so how about we try a different approach, which is let's search for the, the this error message that comes up, not valid registry information. So we are going to, um, going to search for strings, all reference strings in this, and we are going to search for valid registry Oh, here it is. This is not valid registry information. So this address, this memory location is called at some point. So why don't we just double click on this 
and it's going to show you, imagine this like a player piano in some way. Um, this shows you all of the instructions that are being called by the program one at a time and at some point it calls this instruction that shows on an ASCII using ASCII this is not valid registry information so we are going to um, look up at how this program works it is doing we're gonna look up above it actually I should say um, and it calls it's doing a test so it's testing something and then it's doing this it's saying JNZ short some some address and then if you look there's a little um, jump marker here it tells you it's jumping to this spot well the idea is it's skipping over this this is not valid registry information if if it if it was okay with what information it got so JNZ stands for jump if not zero why don't we just force it to jump with it? instead of checking some information we're just gonna force it to jump so we assemble this, close it, and I'm going to show you what the, uh, and then I'm going to save this information, uh, save this as a new exe, and I'll show you what the uh, attempt looks like. I'm just going to find this on my desktop. Here it is. Okay, so now we have this cracked version of the program running. By cracked, I mean going back to this. We substituted in a jump for a JNZ or jump if not zero or jump jump if zero jump if not zero. I think it's jump if not zero. Um, it's cracked now. We're going to pick a font and we're going to oh sorry it's cracked and let's test if the crack works. EGA two five six of course. Boom! Check that out. We have a cracked version of the program. It thinks that that was an OK serial number. Very cool. So we hit the thing. We try to generate a font. And sure enough, it is generating the font. Now, unfortunately, this did not produce a usable font. Check this out. This is exactly like the demo version. It produced a font that says it has A through N, but none of the other ones work. So that means our crack didn't work. Um, so at this point, I got a little frustrated, and I thought um, I either give up now or we keep going with this. And I thought, well, let's let's keep going with this. Let's see what we can do. So we're going to go back to the original uncracked version of the program by replacing that JNP with the original JNZ and leave it there. So now what? The question is, is there any other string we can search for? Well, there is one other string we can search for that might be useful for us. Let's get out of here. Check this out. There says unregistered in the title bar. So maybe the unregistered thing, we're going to search for that in the strings. And sure enough, here it is. There are a couple of references here to memory locations that say K group picks font unregistered. And then there's one that says program registered to. Oh, this looks helpful. So let's go there. Oops, clicked on the wrong one. Program. All right, so now we have our um, program logic that's showing that at some point it's going to show you unregistered. Now, this is the fascinating thing. Check this out. After it says that it's unregistered, it hits this instruction that jumps, and it skips over all of this information and goes down here. But then, we notice that there's one that says program registered to. So that's telling me that at some point, we are allowing registration to happen. So let's look for that certain moment where registration is kind of enabled. We want to see, so the trick with this is we want to see how we got to program registered. Well, that happened if we scroll up via a jump instruction. This one right here, a JE. 
So the JE is checking jump if equal to. So it's checking, uh, comparing two numbers, probably this instruction here. It's comparing two numbers, and if they are both equal to each other, jump ahead to saying program registered. So when you jump and you want to check something, you use JE. And if you want to jump and check if something's not zero, you use JNZ. Well, let's just force it to jump, just like we did before. So at this time, it's being forced to jump to program registered, even if those two numbers were not the same. So we're going to save it, run the program. And I'm going to find that this one here. When we jumped over to the registered, now the funny thing is it got rid of our register button. That's fine. It says programs registered to none. That's fine. But when we actually select a font and we run generate, boom. So we have our font. Now let's take a look at it. Unbelievable. There you have it. 